Coming up on Midco Sports tonight, you want previews? We got previews. Our FCS and NSIC experts tell you everything you need to know about this weekend's matchups. Then it's a special flashback Friday feature on a former NFL punter making an impact on young lives with the game he loves and his faith. And finally, highlights from the epic high school volleyball matchup in North Dakota, Valley City at West Fargo. All of that plus much more, Midco Sports Tonight kicks off right now. Hello and happy Friday everyone. I'm Kelly Stewart and this is Midco Sports Tonight. The rivalry between St. Cloud State and Minnesota Duluth got turned up last night. The schools introduced a traveling trophy called the Battle for the Bones. So here's a look at that beautiful wooden dog treat. Looks absolutely delicious. But Anthony Wood got the scoring started early with this five yard touchdown run to give Duluth an early 7-0 lead. Wood totaled 128 yards on the ground. Ben Everhart then would connect with James Conner. 52-yard pass play. Connor must not know the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Anyway, he finally gets to the, to the end zone. Duluth goes up 14-0. First play of the second quarter, the Bulldogs take another big bite. Ironically, another 52-yard touchdown pass, this time to Dominic Bonner, and this battle for the bone wasn't much of a battle early on. Fast forward to the fourth quarter, Jason Baltz catches Ben Everhart's fourth touchdown of the night. The Bulldogs take a commanding 34-7 league. St. Cloud State, they would tack on a couple touchdowns to make the score look closer, but it was all Bulldogs in this dogfight. Duluth wins 34-21. Both teams move to 3-2 on the season. Ben Everhart threw for 183 yards and four TDs. Also ran for 81 more yards for Duluth. And opposing quarterback Justin Check went for a 207 yards in the air and two TDs for the Huskies. Moving to the FCS now, Missouri Valley Conference play starts tomorrow for South Dakota, South Dakota State, and North Dakota State. The Jackrabbits will be in Ohio to take on Youngstown State. SDSU is ranked number four in the latest stats FCS poll, while Youngstown is number six. Youngstown went all the way to the FCS National Championship game last year, but they lost three regular season games, one of those to South Dakota State. The Jacks beat the Penguins 24-10 in Brookings behind a Brady Mangarelli touchdown run. Two TD passes by Taryn Christian and one of the better defensive efforts on the season by South Dakota State. SDSU is 3-0 going into tomorrow's game. Youngstown State is 2-1. And both head coaches know it's going to be a good matchup and no matter which way the outcome goes, we're going to learn a lot about these two teams. I think it's a good matchup. I think uh, we I have a tremendous amount of respect for South Dakota State and how they play, how well I think they're a really well coached football team. They, they play physical. They're, they're they're, they're good in all three phases of the game. I mean, they're a good football team, and uh, they have some, uh, they're very talented in, in some, you know, across the board, and uh, it'll be a good challenge for our football team. Because they have some good running backs. I know, you know, uh, they, 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 they all run hard. They play football the right way. You know, they, he has a culture going over there uh, that uh, the, the kids, I think they're accountable, they're disciplined, they, they play tough, they play physical, and that, you know, to me, those are signs of a good football team and a very well-coached football team. I, I think that they're very balanced offense. Uh, I think that they, it's a very well thought out offense. I mean, they, you know, they, you know, the, co the quarterback obviously is a challenge. I mean, you know, we all know that they have playmakers all over the field, um, but it starts with the quarterback and the quarterback can hurt you with his arm. He can hurt you with his legs. He's, uh, uh, you know, they, they, they'll have a few design quarterback runs. They'll, um, they do a lot of run pass options. They, 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 it's a multifaceted offense that makes you, uh, you know, you better, you better be on point defensively and, um, and, you know, you better understand, you know, and be able to make adjustments during the game and that type of thing. But, um, you know, they, they challenge you in some areas that, uh, uh, you know, you, you got You have to execute well. You got to execute the game plan well. This is a huge game. You know, it's uh, start of the Missouri Valley. You know, if you, you have aspirations of being a, a top whatever seed, you need to beat good teams. You can't go on the road and, 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 and stumble right out of the chute. And so, for us going on the road, playing Youngstown, going to be a great crowd. It's a huge game. Well, as you watch uh, Hunter, you know, you see a guy that's comfortable in the pocket. He's not a runner. In fact, they've done less as he's gotten older. But great handle on the offense. 
never looks at where he's going to throw the ball first, always looks people off. So you know he's a mature guy that can run their offense. Youngstown State has won 10 straight games at home, but SDSU won 38-8 to last time they played there. Tomorrow's game kicks off at 6 o'clock Central Time and will be streaming live on ESPN3. Coming up after the break, we preview another Valley matchup, Missouri State at NDSU. Then later in the show, Bob Nielsen discusses the Coyotes' top 25 battle at Western Illinois. Stay right here. Midco Sports Tonight, presented by Avera Orthopedics. 